Hello everyone, it's Shane Kanto, your Wasteland reviewer, and let them all talk. That's the film that I'm going to be reviewing today, and this is from director Steven Soderbergh, and who also did the cinematography and the editing. Surprise. And this film is released on HBO Max. It's an original. Soderbergh's obviously been digging deep into the streaming services the past couple years. He did have Unsane in 2018, Logan Lucky the year before, but then he had High Flying Bird and The Laundromat last year on Netflix, and now he's shifting gears over to HBO Max. And from the first shot of this film, the really high-gloss, shining lights, that yellow-orange tint to everything, just a really incredible smooth and just xylophone and bongo, just cool, jazzy kind of feeling music from Thomas Newman. You know this is a Soderbergh film. And that's amazing. From his cinematography and his direction, there's a coolness, there's an energy about it. You know this is Soderbergh. And because of that, you get this sense of energy and personality to the film right off the bat. And this film is about a famous writer, Mal Streep, who brings her nephew, Lucas Hedges, and her two friends, Diane Wiest and Candace Bergen. And they're on a cruise. But it's not a cruise. It's a voyage or whatever the hell they want to call it. They have a whole entire conversation about that. But they're on this boat, and Gemma Chan plays a person working for the publishing company that Streep works through, trying to figure out what is she writing about. She has this work that everybody loves and wants a sequel to, but she hates. And you can start to get a sense that there might be a reason, and it might have to do with the friends that she has along the way on this journey. And you have the tensions that are building between these friends. And Streep is Streep. Streep gives a really strong performance. Candace Bergen has some moments where she, you could see the tension in the air and by her face and the looks that she makes over Meryl Streep that there's something there. And they build that tension really well. Diane Weist is kind of the friend in the middle and you have these fun moments of her and Candace Bergen playing some board games but there's definitely some tension there somewhere. And then you have this budding charismatic romance between, or what seems to be a romance, might just be a one-sided romance, between Lucas Hedges and Gemma Chan. Is Chan using Lucas Hedges to get to his aunt and figure out what she's writing? There, this film deals with a lot of strong characters, strong performances. There's one particular scene that's supposed to be extremely emotional, like the big emotional impact of the film, that I felt like Hedges underacted a little bit which kind of took me out of the film, but in general, the rest of the cast and him throughout the rest of the film do a really strong job of portraying their characters. There's a lot of charisma. I really like Gemma Chan in this film, and the scenes between her and Lucas Hedges, they were, I felt like there was some spark there, and you wanted to see if this was going to work out. Was this going to go somewhere, or was it really meaningful? This film is one of those kinds of things where it was just like a smooth dramedy throughout most of the film. It's a fun time. It's an interesting time. It's not going to blow you out of the water, but this is something that you could be really enjoyable to watch, and there's enough tension there to keep it driving. It's that kind of film that you get some realizations at the end and makes you rethink so much of the film and seeing so many details that were right in front of your face, but you didn't realize it. So this film, I think on second viewing, would have a much deeper, more impactful experience, and especially with that those revelations at the end of the film really sets that up. And there is some real tension, there's some seediness going on, and some great acting in certain scenes, especially in the third act of this film. And this might not be the best Soderbergh, but you could definitely tell he's in peak technical prowess. And there's just a coolness about this film that just pulls you in. And the characters and this pretty engaging story keeps you there for the runtime. It's close to two hours, could be feeling a little bit long at times, but in general I think this is a really solid, well-made film, and I enjoyed uh, Let, the, um, Let Them All Talk quite a bit. And Soderbergh's a really auteur, talented director, so wouldn't expect anything less. But those are my thoughts on HBO Max's new sh film. Let me know what you think. 
and let's talk some movies. But thank you as always for tuning in and supporting your Wasteland Reviewer.